We're all aware of the epidemic that has struck the world. Corona that made the entire globe stand on its toes. It spread fear in people's hearts to an extent that makes one believe or think that this is the first disaster ever striking humanity. But it wasn't. As a matter of fact, plagues and epidemics have struck humanity since the time of the companions radiallahu anhum. During the time of Umar, and precisely in the 18th Hijri year, a plague outbroke in a city in Palestine called Amwas. And it was known as Ta'un Amwas, the plague of Amwas. During that, between 25 to 30,000 people died, amongst whom some of the best of the companions, radiallahu anhum, like Mu'adh ibn Jabal, Al-Fadn ibn Abbas, and Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah, radiallahu anhum ajma'een, and many others. Few decades later, another plague outbroke by the name of Al-Jarif. Books of history tells us, or tell us that amongst the results, the outcome of this is that Anas radiallahu anhu ibn Malik, who was the last companion to die radiallahu anhu, lost 70 to 80 of his offspring. Between children and grandchildren, 70 to 80. And let's jump in the history and go on the timeline. The Spanish flu killed more than 50 million people. And some statistics say it reached a hundred million people as a result of this Spanish flu. So Corona is not something that was not preceded by something else that is more disastrous on humanity. But it's just that Allah Azza wa Jal keeps sending messages to people to keep them alert. And Allah has wisdom why He causes things like that. One of which is that Allah Azza wa Jal proves to people with a sign like this, with a creature like this, a virus that cannot be seen with the naked eye, it needs a special type of microscope to be seen. It causes the entire globe to go nuts. And lose focus. A sign proven his power and ability to bring humanity down to their knees in front of his power and sovereignty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing is that Allah Azza wa Jal proves to people. That he runs the universe as he wills, and he strikes whomever he wills, and saves whomever he wills. Many people were afflicted by this virus, by Corona. But the ironic issue is that one of the doctors who was treating patients, who treated a large number of them, and they're now running their daily business, he himself died because of Corona. So it's the will of Allah to cause the death or afflict whomever He wills and save whomever He wills. Allah Azza wa Jal tries people and people are of two categories, either believers or non-believers. For believers, it is a test that cleanses them from their sins, elevate their ranks, 
as well as reminding them, bring them back to the path. Those who are sinful and heedless, it strikes them to wake them up and bring them back to the path of Allah. But as for non-believers, it is a form of punishment from Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal does what He wills, the way He wills, at the time He wills, at the place He wills. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا يُسْأَلُ عَمَّا يَفْعَلُ he is, he is not to be questioned about what he does. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. One thing very important here to note is that we are not supposed to confirm and say for sure that this is why Allah Azza wa Jal is doing this because we don't know. This is in the unseen and unknown. Because it's circulating amongst a lot of people that this is a punishment for the non-believers. What a strike in Muslim countries as well. So we cannot confirm for sure. Few things when dealing with the issue of Corona. First and foremost, we must firmly believe that this took place by the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. And thus, and since we are believers who believe in this, we must act upon the saying of the Prophet wasallam, who said, and this is reported by Ahmad, classified as authentic by Al-Albani, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا أَصَابَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْطِئَكَ وَمَا أَخْطَأَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُصِيبَكَ Whatever has befallen you, was not ever, could not have ever passed you by. And whatever has passed you by, could not have ever befallen you. It is decreed. Two people exposed to the same illness, one will get it and one will not. Two people receive the illness, become ill, one will die and one will not. Second, the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said, لا عدوى ولا طيارة. There is no infection and no evil omen. Don't hasten to start thinking about this hadith until it's explained. No infection here means, and in the pre-Islamic era, People used to think that disease in itself or means of disease on themselves cause diseases. And they jump from one person to the other, infecting others. The Prophet ﷺ here is correcting this concept, saying that in itself it will not harm anyone. Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who causes it to make people ill. Last point I would like to address in this point, in this regard, is not to exaggerate the matter. People have become overwhelmed with regards to Corona. You see this everywhere you go. At work, people talk about it. When you're at dinner at home, people talk about it. Your wife and your children and your daughters. You open the internet, websites, news sites, everybody is talking about it. New websites being created to get the statistics, news channels, newspapers, magazines. What's wrong, people? Let us not exaggerate when dealing with this because it is simply a decree from Allah Azza wa Jal, and it was preceded by other decrees of the same type that were more fatal and destructive. So let's give each its due weight. Allah Azza wa Jal afflicts people to remind them with their need to Him and their weakness and incapability.
big countries, human resources, financial resources, technical resources, scientists, scholars, this and that, and the issue is not contained yet. So that people remember that Allah is, Azza wa Jal is above them. Sovereignty, absolute sovereignty belongs to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. How should we deal with Corona? How do we protect ourselves? Are there things to do to protect ourselves? Preventive measures. Yes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim, said, if you hear that plague outbroke in a place, don't travel to it. And if it outbreaks in a place where you live or you are residing at the time, then don't leave it. So for those who want to travel, don't travel to places that have that and that the numbers in it are very high. That's one. Number two, another prophetic instruction. He وسلم, said, an ill person should not enter into the presence of a healthy person. One might say, but wait a minute, there is the hadith that says no adwa, no infection. Yes, but the scholar said that the second narration means avoid doing so lest Allah Azza wa Jal had decreed and predestined that his presence be the cause of his illness and thus this is utilizing worldly means. Another matter is that Every country, every state had announced certain uh, procedures, if you may, precautionary and preventive measures for people, for residents to follow. We need to adhere to that because this came after research and study of the environment and the situation and thus it is beneficial for the individual and the community at large. Adhkar al-sabahi wal masa The adhkar of the morning and the evening as well as any other legislated dhikr by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is a shield against all evil. Physical and spiritual evils. They are preventive measures and they are as well cure and treatment. In the famous story of the companions who were travel, traveling and they stopped and wanted some food from a tribe who is non-Muslim and they refused so they camped next to them and the leader was stung. So they went to them and asked them if any of them knows how to do ruqya and one of them said yes but this is going to be for something in return. He recited Al-Fatiha seven times on the head of the tribe who is not a Muslim and he walked up, started, he, he stood up walking out as if nothing had uh, afflicted him before that. The point here is, this is not a medication per se like a tangible, this is ruqya by the means of the Quran. Uh, health institutions, the hospitals and the Ministry of Health say, keep your hands always clean. Whenever you touch anything, wash it with soap. Not just water, rinse it with water. No, clean it with soap. I will conclude with this, another prophetic instruction. Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, and this is reported by Abu Dawood and Ahmed Irz and classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said that the Prophet ﷺ used to seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal from four things. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-judhami wal-jununi wal-barasi wa sayyi al-asqam. This is a dua that we need to memorize. Shaykh al-Uthaymeen rahmatullahi alayhi says, this dua works for any disease. 
He said, including cancer. These things that Allah decree should be dealt with as reminders. So let us deal with it as a reminder, wakening us up to bring us back to the path and deal with it as we should and deal with Allah as He deserves. Deal with our sins and shortcomings and be scared of them just as we are scared of Corona. And trust me, if we do so, our situation will enhance. And I'm not going to say over a period of six months to a year, I claim that if we deal with our sins as people have lost their minds and dealt in such a fear with Corona, we can change overnight. And I don't think I'm exaggerating. Because people have taken this way beyond its dimensions. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from all evil.